Hi guys, it's Mary. It is um, Saturday night, so we're going to do a little get-together, a little tutorial. Um, and we're going to make a fun gift box and a matching fun fold card. So let me get uh, over to the side here and just be sure that I'm transmittalating so that I'm not just, you know, talking to myself because myself is pretty, pretty boring. Uh, I hope you guys are having a good weekend, your last weekend before Thanksgiving. I hope you're ready. Started making eggs, started, you know, making pies and stuff like that. Hey, Kathy, thank you for joining me. I appreciate you. Um, we'll uh, get going here in just a minute. Hey, Jean and Sharon, appreciate you joining. Hi, Barbara. <clears throat> I'm going to get a drink. I apparently have a dry throat. Hey, Karen and Pam, thank you. Appreciate you joining. Hi, Donna. Hi, Jerry. Appreciate you coming. For all of you who are demonstrators, are you excited for pre-order coming up next week? Hi, Denise. Hi, Jean. Hey, Robbie. Appreciate you coming and spending part of your weekend with me. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I told you that when I was on stage last weekend, one of my fun downlines, Tara Carpenter, presented me with this lovely gift box. And this uses the Magnolia Lane, Good Morning Magnolia, and the and the uh, matching bundle to create a beautiful gift box with this pizza from a mini pizza box. And it's very darling. Hi, Daryl. Hey, Christy. Are you, am I blurry? Are you guys having blurriness issues? Let me double check which internet I'm on. I think I'm on a good one, but one never knows. Nope, I'm on a good one. Might be y'all's. Y'all, uh, blurry? Mm. Well, hopefully it'll get better soon. I do hope so. I apologize for that. So anyway, this is the gift box that she gave me. And on the inside is this stunning fun fold card. Now watch this. It's very pretty just from the beginning. This is about three and a quarter by three and a quarter. But look what it does. Look at how it just unfolds in this beautiful accordion with all the lovely papers and the sentiments. Um, all started out with this gorgeous magnolia that she's made with the uh, with the die set. Um, I just thought this was a stunning, stunning card. I love the fun fold. I love all the opp opportunities to decorate and to provide. Look here, she even did paper piecing with the, uh, oh boy, beautiful you, I think that is, stamp set. Um, so this is gorgeous. I want So I wanted to share the technique with you, but I decided I would use that technique to give you a sneak peek. First of all, thank you, Tara. This was wonderful. Really a nice gift. Um, I wanted to give you a sneak peek. What is the length on that card? Well, I'm going to get to that in just a second. It, it's part of the, uh, the way we're going to make it. So give me one second, Tanya, and we'll get going. Um, hey, Ross. Hey, Christy. Okay, so... This is the card, that, it's not a card, well it's a card and a gift box, and it starts again with the uh, mini pizza box. And this one uses the Timeless Tropical stamp set with the um, In the Tropics dies and some tro beautiful tropical Oasis DSP. This is some of the prettiest paper I've seen in a long time. And then for one of my sentiments, um, on the inside, you'll see, I used the Celebration stamp set called Sending You Thoughts. This is an awesome stamp set. Get it for $50 free in the uh, it, during Celebration in January through March. And there you go. It is a wonderful set. It's got big, great big wish for happiness, happy birthday. What's this I hear? Well, all I can say is congratulations. Um, I used this last week for a Get Well card. If loving thoughts could heal, you'd be better already. Really, really fun sentiment set. So be watching for this when celebration starts. All right, so now you remember our mini pizza boxes are actually food safe. So you could make this little gift box and put a cookie or a big square of brownie or a cookie and a brownie. You could do whatever and you could put it directly in and you'd be good to go. But in this case... Um, I made a matching card, again with the Timeless Tropical set, and I used also the Timeless, is it the Timeless Tropical, uh, the Tropical Oasis Memories and More card pack. 
Okay, and mine extends out like this. And you can see this is a birthday card, Aloha on the front, and then rest and relax, you enjoy it. That is a sentiment from Timeless Tropical. And then here is that uh, sending you thoughts sentiment in the center. And I really just use this as a palette to show these gorgeous, gorgeous papers. I, I just love them. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. It's not terribly hard, but it does take a little second or two, but I think we'll make it. Um, so let me go ahead and get started. I just realized that I did not cut quite enough cardstock. We'll get you some going here in just a second, though. Not a worry, not a problem at all. Not a problemo at all. All right, what I didn't cut was the size of my card box. So let me go ahead and just measure just to be sure I'm doing it right. That is seven eighths by uh, three and three eighths. And we're gonna do that in uh, uh, so saffron cardstock. So let me just do this three and three eighths by seven eighths. What do you think the odds are I can get two out of this one? I bet you mm, probably just shy. Oh no, look at that, it's gonna work. I can get two out of there. I need four. Okay, so there's two. And we'll do one more set of two. Thank you, Carla. I was so tickled to get that from Tara because it's just, it's a great fold. Um, and it really gives you lots of space to show off beautiful DSP. And we certainly do have beautiful DSP, both in the annual catalog where that Magnolia paper came from and in the new holiday catalog and in the new occasions catalog, or I'm sorry, the 2020 January through June mini catalog. Yeah, that one. All right, so now we'll cut some more of this paper and that is going to be three quarters of an inch wide. Come on, three quarters of an inch wide. So remember you've got Christmas coming up and Christmas means treats. So let's see, that was three and three eighths to three and a quarter. And this is a great way to give some pretty treats. Hey, Pam. What's the cutting board? I'm going to show you that in just a second, Sue. That was another gift that I got. And I am using it for a non-standard uh, use. It's not what it was meant for. But it's doing a very fine job of holding my card cuts right now. All right. So three and a quarter. Sorry about that, guys. I should have had this ready, but I got... Uh, we decided this would be a good night to go to dinner with our friends, and that's maybe wasn't my best plan, but you got to do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? And it was good. Of course, I ate a week's worth of calories in one evening, but that's not a problem. You can do that every once in a while, right? And one more of these, and then we're going to put it together. Okay. So the cutting board, I'm going to show you that here in just a second. Uh, one of my other downlines, Karen Owsley, presented this to me, and her husband made it. It's actually a little miniature cutting board that she uses. She asked her husband for one, and she uses it to put her um, cardstock on, and she clips it with a mini binder clip and uses it to hold the cardstock while she heat embosses so that she isn't burning her little fingers, and I think that is an awesome, awesome idea. Uh, but since I am not heat embossing today, I decided to use it as a very good spot to hold on to all the card cuts, the little uh, die cuts that I've made ahead of time. So there you go. Alrighty, so let's put that aside. Now, before you joined, I took one of our mini pizza boxes and I used my sponge brayer and brayered it in Blushing Bride. Now, Blushing Bride is not one of the colors in this suite, but I like how it looked with this combination of cardstock. So that is what I did. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and just start um, putting it together. We'll set it up like this, get all the folds made. Now, I love these. 
And to be honest, if I'd had any gold ones in my stash, I probably would have done a gold mini pizza box, and then I wouldn't have brayered it, of course. Like, duh, Mary, right? You wouldn't brayer a gold mini box. But I didn't have any of those, so I decided to color one of my own white boxes. Oh, Tara, I didn't see what you said. I hope what it was is, boy, that's fun, Mary. I thought you were going to do what I did. And I was, but you want to be, you want to know the honest to God truth? I really wasn't sure I could make as good a magnolia as you made. So I felt inferior. I love it so much. I did want to share the technique though. It is gorgeous. Now what I've done here is I kind of sometimes when I make my pizza boxes, I want it to stay mostly closed when I open the envelope. So I'm just putting a little piece of tear and tape on the inside of that flap so that it will um, keep it kind of closed and together. That is personal preference. You do not have to do that by any stretch of the imagination. Not by any stretch of the imagination. All right, and then we just close it together like that and put it down and there we go. We're ready to rock and roll. All right, I have a piece of So Saffron and then one piece of the um, Tropical Oasis DSP, the back of which looks like, oh, grass cloth, I suppose. And I am going to, thank you, Tara, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. This is a great suite. I know the two ladies already have them because you were at on stage and got to do the product purchase premiere with me. So I'm sure you're already making wonderful, wonderful projects with it. All right, and then I'm going to just put the card. I don't, I don't have enough words for how beautiful this paper is. I just don't. It is absolutely spectacular. Even the paper on the back is pretty. Again, kind of a green grass cloth. Um, but nobody can say that this isn't spectacular paper. The colors are just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, and then I'm just going to put that on the top with more liquid glue. And then we can get the sides done and decorate it, and then we can work on our little fun fold. All right. Okay, so this is... Oh, I guess I should have done a little bit of... Uh, pre-gluing, huh? Sorry about that. My bad. Did y'all have a fun online extravaganza? I thought that was good. I got some cardstock ordered on the last day because I figured, you know, this is a really good time to get all stocked up. Um, I have been routinely low on uh, 12 by 12 cardstock, and sometimes it's fun to have that. Uh, hey, Carol. It's fun to have 12 by 12 because a lot of um, fun folds and 3D projects want 12 by 12. So I now have a pack of 12 by 12 cardstock coming in each of the um, in each of the color families. So that'll be good. And I think that's mostly. Oh, I got another pumpkin pie ink pad because I guess at some point I used some different colors somewhere or other. And now when I stamp in my <laughs> pumpkin pie ink pad, I get a rainbow effect, which is fun, but not if you're trying for straight up pumpkin pie, which sometimes I am. All right. You guys got your Christmas shopping done? <laughs> no. Did you know if you need a gift, I can get that for you. I do gift certificates. So if you need a gift certificate for someone, let me know and we'll get you all hooked up. I'll email you a digital copy that you can print out and then your recipient can just get in touch with me and uh, we'll get her get her going. Loved on stage was my first one went to Sydney. Awesome. How fun. That is great. Um, I'd like to go to Australia's on stage once. Hey Phyllis, where in southeast Colorado are you from? Uh, I have family in Colorado, and a friend of mine lives out in Yuma, Colorado. I always thought there was, I didn't know there was a Yuma, Colorado, until she moved to Yuma, Colorado. I thought the only Yuma that I knew about was in Arizona. Which, you know, it's one of those things. It's probably not at all like the Yuma in Colorado, but it could be almost as, you know, not so much stuff around there 
as Yuma, Yuma, Arizona is. I'm not sure. I think there's a lot of cows and maybe wheat. I don't know. I also think it's almost to Kansas. So I have always thought for the longest time now, I have thought that Colorado should seed. Oh, Los, Los Animas. I like it down there. That's real pretty there. Um, it's a, uh, yeah, that's pretty. Is that like n near Durango, Pagosa Springs area, almost into New Mexico, kind of in the Four Corners area? Am I thinking the right place? Oh, wait, that's, yeah, am I thinking the right area? Maybe? Okay. Now, you could get all fancy on this front and use a small punch and punch a hole, but I didn't. I just covered it up just like that. Okay. All right, and now we're gonna decorate and give a sentiment to the top while that dries. Um, I, ahead of time, I made a little mat. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of the sentiments from Timeless Tropical. Oh, come here now. And we're gonna stamp it on a piece of white and punch it with, well, a punch. We should, we're gonna use a starburst punch and I'm gonna stamp this first. I'm gonna stamp the, um, oh, I should probably put the stamp on the block. I'm gonna stamp it in early espresso to start with. And then with my So Saffron pad, I'm going to stamp over it with the small flower from Timeless Tropical without very much rhyme or even reason. Just gonna be kind of all over it, like that. Look at how pretty that stamped image is. Lovely, so this is one of the distinctive stamps. So um, you get a lot of texture, really my other corner. Oh, okay, okay. Um, get a lot of texture with just the stamp and that's kind of handy which I really like. And of course, there is a die in the, um, in the Tropics dies that cuts that flower out. It also, there's also one that cuts the larger flower out. So, hey, yay, no more fussy cutting. Next up, I'm gonna take my Starburst punch and I'm gonna stamp this, punch this out like that. And then we're gonna build our sentiment. And what I did is I kind of, I offset the mat just a little bit. Like that. Okay. And then I took a piece of the new ribbon. It's not ribbon really. This is um, braided jute twine, ba braided burlap trim. It's 5 16 inches wide, and you can see it's, uh, it's a nice solid, um, nice solid ribbon. And what I did to adhere that, I've got to find my tweezers. Where's my tweezers? Oh, tweezers, they're there. Whew. Almost lost the tweezers. Frangipani, there's the word I was looking for. It's a frangipani. It's a frangipani. All right, so what I'm doing is I've got a glue dot and I'm just making a loop like this with my twine. And I've put a glue dot on the top of the box and I'll glue dot one side of the twine, or the I'm gonna call it twine, sorry. It's braided burlap ribbon trim. And then I'm gonna take a second glue dot and adhere the two pieces together like that, okay? <clears throat> then I'm gonna take a couple of dimensionals. You knew I'd get a dimensional in here somewhere. And what I do is I just figure out where I can put dimensionals and essentially I'm putting a dimensional where there isn't twine, okay? So here is a dimensional. Here will be a dimensional, here will be a dimensional. So that the tw the dimensional is not on top of the twine or because it won't, it just won't sit down correctly, okay? So do a little dry fit and then one right here. I almost put that dimensional on the front. Hello, Mary, hello. 
All right. So we'll get that on and then put a few little flowers. A few little flowers like that. Okay. Now, on my cutting board, before you join, I cut some flowers and leaves. Plumeria. Nice. Oh, nice. Very beautiful. Whew. I know you were worried, weren't you, Carla, that I was not going to get a dimensional in here. Now, if you can see these leaf, leaves and um, flowers, this little flower image right here, the die, it cuts three flowers at one time. And what I did is I stacked a blushing bride and a soft uh, so saffron piece stacked them up and then put this on top. So I essentially cut six flowers at once. Um, and then I did each of these leaves. Here, I'll show them to you in just one second. I'll show you the dyes. All right, where did you go? There we go, right here. You can see these are embossing and cutting. So I did spritz my, um, this is pear pizzazz cardstock. I spritzed it with water before I cut it. And I did that twice so that I would have eight leaves to play with. And then I also um, cut out, hey, Kathy, glad you could join us tonight. I also cut out Aloha in Whisper White. Okay. So let me put this back before I lose a die. I would hate to lose a die before the catalog even goes live. That would be very bad. Ver, ver bad. And I'm just going to make myself a little miniature collage right here. So I think what I'll do is do a dry fit and we're going to put our leaf in there. I may have to cut that off a little bit. There we go. Probably put a leaf there. And then let's see, we might use, I'm going to use a pink flower this time, I think. Put a pink flower there and then maybe a leaf underneath the flower like that and let's see how about one of these leaves and get it it's got a hanging chad there we'll get that hanging chad off get get off get off leave me hanging chad leave me okay all right so that's gonna be i think that works i like it so we'll go ahead and put it all together this uh, never got tropical chic yeah this one is is quite gorgeous <laughs> i really like this one i loved tropical chic still love it but this one the paper is just it's spot on absolutely spot on gorgeous all right and then we'll just put our leaves in our uh like that Stay, stay there, stay right there. It helps if you talk to your dyes. They like to be talked to. And then we'll put this on. And you can see when you when you stack them up, when you stack the two cardstock, sometimes you get lucky and that little center stays in and you have an instant center on your little flower. On your little flower. Oh, oh, that's so cute. And then I'm gonna take one of the green rhinestones from noble peacock but i'm gonna have to put it down to get it and i'm gonna stick it right there should i put it there maybe i think i'll put it there i like it right there there okay so there's our box now you could actually be done and call it good and make a couple three more and use these to give away treats but we're going to make a card because I want you to know how to make this card. And it is so hard. It is crazy hard. It's just so very hard. All right. You ready? All right. What you need, what you need is two pieces of equal size. This is three and one quarter inches wide by nine and three quarters inches long. And you're going to score them both the same amount. All right. Thank you, Marianne. And you're going to do your first score at three and a quarter and your second score at six and a half. And do the same on the other piece of cardstock. Three and one quarter and six and one half. 
Okay. And then Mr. Scoreboard is done. We are done, yeah, with him. Now, what's going to happen is we're going to do some folding. Let me show you the card so you can see how it rolls. You can see it folds up like this, and then one piece is the, is the front, right? So you're going to do your first piece like so, and then the other direction on the other one. And then this will overlap like so, and this will go like that, and then like that. So that becomes your accordion card. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to adhere the two pieces together in at the center, okay? Now, you could use tear and tape, um, but I like to use the liquid glue because that gives me a little time to be sure that everything is lined up really well, and I want it to line up really well. Um, because I want it to be kind of as invisible as possible so that nobody really goes, oh look, she's stuck two pieces together. I want them to think, my gosh, where did she get that excessively long cardstock? And I'll just smugly say, I don't have any idea. I'm just that good. I found excessively large cardstock. Okay, and so there is our card. Now, really, it doesn't get a whole lot easier than that. Okay, now I've got a whole bunch of pieces. So let's start by making our card front. Now, let me tell you a little something about this piece of paper right here. There are about three cars on the DSP that you can get this size out of without having another piece of a car sitting here. So you gotta look for the one that you want. This is two inches by three. Um, if you if you really just get totally exhausted with the whole idea of trying to find that card, use a different piece of paper. It ain't no thing. All right. Hey, Eunice. Glad you could join. Where did the pink pizza box? Oh, it's just a regular mini pizza box, and I used my um, sponge brayer and colored it with Blushing Bride. Just colored it all over with Blushing Bride. Easy peasy. Remember, you can have any color of almost anything that you want because we've got a little bit of all of it. Okay, so I'm taking another piece of the uh, same kind of DSP that I used on the front of the box, the top of the box, and I am matting it on a likely sized piece of So Saffron, and these are actually three and one eighth by three and one eighth, as are all of the mats for the card, okay? And then I'm taking this carefully vignetticized woody car with its um, surfboard on it, and I am going to adhere that to the front with some liquid glue, like this. Okay, and I have to be a little quiet because I have to talk. Okay, because I have to make sure it gets on the right spot. Okay, now Aloha is going to go down here. So I'll just use a little bit of liquid glue. And then I'm going to show you a fun thing. The um, the uh, palm tree in this stamp set is uber cute and has a die that goes with it. So I'm going to show you how I colored that. And it's a great technique. So this can sit aside for just a hot second. Let me pull out my Stampopotamus here and get my magnets apart and a piece of card stock in. All right, am I in the screen? Yes, okay. Just be okay with cutting into a car. You could also just cut into a car. Um, yeah, you could certainly do that. And at one point I, I almost reached that point where I said, I can't find a car. It was like, where's Waldo? It's, where's the Woody? Uh, and it was having, I was having a hard time with it. All right, so now we're going to create a multicolored palm tree. And I'm gonna do that with the beautiful, beautiful thing that is a Stamparatus, okay? I'm going to use the marker technique, and I'm gonna start with my early espresso, 
and I'm just going to color the actual rubber with my marker. Okay? And I'm just coloring the trunks. This, like I said, this is a distinctive set, so wait till you see what it does. And then I'm huffing on it just a little bit and stamping it. And see how perfect? And if I didn't have a good enough image, I would do that again, but, but I'm okay with it. The next one I'm going to do, I'm going to do a layer of um, pear pizzazz on the palm fronds like this. all over try to get everything colored <sighs> just so you know that technique is called huffing you huff on the stamp to re-energize the ink and then you can sip it down like that and I didn't get a very good image so I'm just going to do it again and of course it's building a little color so that's good. Okay, now I'm gonna take my Mossy Meadow and I am just, what about the pineapple too? It, oh, hey, I'll show you that, I did that. I cut it out, just one second. Okay, so I'm gonna take my Mossy Meadow and I'm just gonna kinda give it, I'm just gonna do a little bit across it like that. You see, I'm not coloring the entire image, I'm just, kind of highlighting because I want to give a little bit of shading without just, you know, overwhelming it with with uh, Mossy Meadow. <sighs> this is where the Stamparatus truly, truly shines. Look at how gorgeous that is. I mean, seriously, that could be a real palm tree. Seriously, that could be a real palm tree, and it was about as easy as it's possible to do. Now, I'm going to use the die that I now have to find. Wait, here it is. It, it went and hid under my cutting board. See a wee thing. Where's my, I made a, oh, there it is. Here's what the, uh, you want to see what the pineapple looks like? So this die right here is the pineapple and then the pineapple top. And you can see there is how the pineapple looks in So Saffron. Isn't that sweet? And then this is how the top looks in Pear Pizzazz. And these little doohickeys kind of fold up. So you get this beautiful textural pineapple. Bum, bum, bum. Mind blown. Cool, right? Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna set that aside, and then I'm going to use this die right here, and I'm going to quickly go to my Big Shot and cut out my um, palm tree. Hang on just one second while I do that. I just don't think I need to move all my stuff so you can see me cut out yet another thing with my cutting machine, because it's just not very exciting, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for not being exciting. All right. But I gotta get it lined up. Okay, there we go. There we go. Isn't this cool that we got a die for these palm trees? Because I always want to put palm trees on, and I never do because they're too hard for me to fussy cut. As much as I like to fussy cut, they're too hard for me to fuss a cut. But now I do not have to. Now I have palm trees that just get cut in a heartbeat. Bye, Tanya. Have fun with your company. Have fun with your company. Okay, let's see. Where's my card front? Uh, here it is. Okay. All right. So now I'm just going to adhere this with liquid glue. Oops. 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 I just dropped it as if it was a hot potato just like it was a hot tater. And we're just gonna use liquid glue. Now, I think you could probably, if you wanted to, there's room in this box for more card. So you could, in fact, pop this on with Stampin' Dimensionals. I just did not, but you certainly could. All right. And there we go, we'll scooch it like that. And there he is, okay. 
And then this is the front of our card. And we'll put him on with liquid glue. So what I what I was thinking as I was making this, and the reason there is kind of not as many dimensionals as you are accustomed to seeing, is I thought if I kept this a kind of a minimal um, depth that one could in fact put a cookie in like a little cellophane bag and then stick the card on top. Because a card is nice, a box is nice, but a card and a box with a cookie is awesome. Okay, now, hi Lois, how are you? Okay, so now, really, the only thing left to do is to decorate the inside, and, and this is where it's time for you to be creative. You can do however you like. Um, I really kind of wanted to showcase how beautiful this DSP is, and so uh, you can see that I picked three sort of similar colors and shapes and designs, but um, you can see this paper and this paper are really the same with a So Saffron or a Coastal Cabana background. Now this one is actually not a piece of the DSP. This one is actually one of the Memories and More card pack cards cut down to three by three, okay? This one is another Memories and More card pack that I cut down and then the rest of them are DSP. So it really gets really easy really fast. Okay, so let's go ahead and just start putting stuff together. Let's just put it together. Let's just do it. I mean, come on, let's do it. Let's just do it. Because I want you to see how very, very easy this is. Really the hardest part is deciding what paper to put where and what sentiments to use. Um, and the reason that's even sort of difficult is because, you know, there's so many to choose from. And the temptation is to use them all. Let's use them all. So really what I did to start with is, when I was making this the first time, is I picked my papers, and then I matted everything, and then I just laid them on my open card until I liked the way the arrangement looked. Make sense? Um, I wanted my sentiment, my primary sentiment, right in the middle. And so that's how it ended up. Like that. And then we got another one. Like this. And I even used some of the Memories and More card pack stickers. So that was kind of fun. Now you'll see this is going to end up looking um, exactly like what I made this morning. But that's okay too, right? Okay, so that's how it's going to start. And then for this panel, what I did is first I took a piece of this DSP, which is actually this DSP reversalated, and I um, stamped two of the corners, punched two of the corners with my... Um, Detailed Trio Punch, this little flurry, flurry do there. Get in there, there we go. Okay, and then the opposite corner. And that lets that uh, cardstock show through, right? So now we'll adhere that. Now look, I cut my, uh, my mat for my sentiment out of one of my mats. A little bit of uh, cardstock preservation there because you just never know when you might run out of cardstock, which is not quite as bad as running out of toilet paper, but it's a different kind of bad. Um, it is darn near as bad as running out of coffee, just saying, okay? Now, in the, um, I know, right? Lynn, isn't this just gorgeous? I mean, it's just gorgeous. It's, it's really quite beautiful. Part of each Memories and More card pack is a stack of stickers, and these are particularly lovely. So I used them to make a very pretty um, focal point here. And I used the Enjoy one. You've got Thanks as well. And I just put it in the middle here. Uh, but I want to do that way. Don't be silly, Mary. Okay, like that. And then I picked a couple of flowers, 
And I'm going to put some flowers on. Flower, flower stickers. Those are flower stickers. A little bit of flower stickers here and a flower sticker there. Here, a sticker there, a sticker everywhere, a stick, sticker. There we go. And you can see you've got some sentiment labels and some cute little like postage stamp doohickeys and hearts. Lots and lots of hearts. So these are fun. I love these. All right. Running out of cardstock would be horrible. Yeah, running low is bad out would be horrible. All right, so there's that one. And the very last one that we need to make is this um, sentiment right here. And then I can put together the rest of the cart. So let's go ahead and stamp, rest and relax. You deserve it. All right. And we're going to do that in early espresso that I have momentarily lost. It's here somewhere. Oh, espresso. There you are. See, hiding over there. Gosh. All right. Now, what I do when I'm using um, the stamps that I have mounted myself in particular is I tend to stamp it on my scrap paper just to make sure that it actually stamps straight and where I think it's going to so that I don't end up with a horrible mistake. And I'm going to pull this to me just a little bit. Um, this particular one that I have is handy because it's got some, uh, um, it's a grid. So that's very nice. It makes it a little bit easier even to line up. All right. Now, I need to put uh, a, this on a mat. And we'll be ready to start putting stuff together here. In just a second. In just one second, we'll be ready to put it together. And that's a pretty paper, too. But that just really didn't do match for me. I was going with the the big flowers, the um, frangipania, frangipani and plumerias, that one, right? Am I right? Okay. I hope I'm right. Okay. So now we can set that aside and go ahead and put our pieces together. And this is really just an exercise in gluing. So if you're bored with me, you are welcome to depart. All right, so there's our in first inside panel. And the liquid glue gives you a second. Then we'll do the next inside panel. And then this is going to be our uh, main sentiment. So we're going to come back and do a little more decoration on this one. Otherwise, this would get a little boring, wouldn't it? Where there's nothing going on. I think that looks like up. I actually didn't think that had an up or a down, but it rather distinctly does, doesn't it? Okay. And then the final one is... Hmm. Oh, there it is. Gosh, these things just have little legs today. Oh, <laughs> that tropical flower and that other tropical flower. You know, let's be a little more specific, could we? The bigger tropical flower with the smaller one, or the darker versus the lighter. Let's do that. Oh, but this has up too. It really doesn't because it looks like some are going up and some are going down, but it's okay. But isn't that pretty how that's the same paper with just a different background? I like that, and I liked the continuity of it across this card. There we go. All right. Just like that. Okay, now, all we have left to do is to put our um, sentiment on. And I used, again, the Sending, Your, Sending You Thoughts stamp set, the $50 level stamp set from Celebration. And I stamped it in Early Espresso on Whisper White and cut it with a um, nested, stitched nested label. And then I'm going to use some dimensionals. And you'll see, do you see I'm putting the dimensionals toward the center of the cutout? That's because I'm probably going to want to slide some leaves under there and I want to have room for that. So that's just a little tip. Hi, Rosalie. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. All right. Now, I'd put this a little bit off center. I didn't put it in the middle. Didn't want it in the middle. I'll get my cutting board back here. 
and we're gonna make us a little bitty collage all right I'm gonna use these leaves because I love them can you see that you can see all that that definition in there um, that is because I wet it before I cut it okay if you don't do that you still get a nice leaf but it isn't quite as defined um, in fact well that's not gonna show you Yeah, this one is the first one I made. Can you see that leaf? It's just a little, has a little less definition. I'm not sure if you can see that on the camera. This is the one I wet. This one here that's on the first box, I did not wet. So I would recommend for sure uh, wetting, wetting your, these, uh, your cardstock when you use these dies, okay? So we're just gonna build us a little a little doha here and in the interest of time I'm just moving along because I know what my collage wants to be on this but if I didn't know I would be uh, doing some dry fitting okay but I do know so not required not required and then I'm going to use a pink flower remember these are the this is from the little die cut that die cuts three flowers at a time which is sweet 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 that and then let's see we'll put a leaf on the top and one more flower I'm gonna use this pink one with the yellow center okay Ooh, I like it I like it I like it and then one more thing because you really can never have too many rhinestones. I mean, I suppose you could have too many rhinestones, but I don't think two rhinestones in one entire project is too many rhinestones. So I'm using this green one again from the Noble Peacock, and I'm gonna set it right there, like a so. So imagine, if you will, this beautiful envelope, which is really a box, and let's see, is it this one? Which one did I just make? Oh, this one. There's your box. The um, pretty accordion box or card fits perfectly inside with room to spare for a brownie or a cookie, I'm just saying. And then there you go. One very beautiful, very beautiful. And you know what? I just realized, look at this. I'm really certain this is an important, this is important. Hang on just a minute. I'm gonna put one of these. This is Melon Mambo, but I think it'll be good. I'm putting that right there. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Boom chakalaka. All right, guys, what do you think? Thank you, Tara. Thank you, thank you, thank you for introducing me to this wonderful project with your gorgeous box that you gave to me. Uh, thank you to Karen Owsley for my gorgeous um, embossing uh, cutting board slash place to keep all of the little tiny die cuts so that I have them ready. I love it. I hope you told passed my thanks to your husband as well. Um, I appreciate y'all joining me tonight. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving on Thursday. And I, at this point, I plan to see you next Saturday. So have a great week and we'll see you next Saturday. Thank you. Bye-bye.